U.S. defense official saying the alleged shooter was in Army Reservists, uh, at least he was in the Army Reserves, while, and while we're piecing everything that happened together in Dallas, Cleveland police officer, officers are expressing extreme concern about their safety at the upcoming RNC. Morgan Wright was senior law enforcement advisor for the 2012 RNC. Morgan, uh, how justified Hi, are these concerns? After today, uh, they're extreme. I mean, in 2012, we were worried about hacktivists, groups like Anonymous, people disrupting things. This time, now you're worrying about having to post counter snipers and having to worry about not only behind you and in front of you, but above you. This, this changes the entire complexion. I'm not sure that this is an entire scenario that they gamed out. I know that they planned for it, but the fact that you can take one person, shoot this many officers, is going to change the complexion of the security approach down at the RNC. You know, Morgan, I think even before last night, uh, there were a lot of rumblings that this was just right. going to be a chaotic, crazy, and perhaps even violence, a lot of violence there. We've seen the sort of things at, at Trump rallies where protesters have right. tried to stop Trump supporters from coming in. They've resorted to violence. They've attacked the police. So layer this on top of it, and you, gotta, you must have a, a, a security nightmare. Look, so when you have something like this, it's called a national special security event. It's under the authority and direction of the Secret Service by law now. They control basically the inner perimeter where the convention will be held. But outside of that, you've got, besides Cleveland, you'll have the Ohio State Patrol. You'll have hundreds of law enforcement agencies, probably a couple thousand officers by the time we're done. It's a massive coordination event. And the fact is you have to, they'll have armor, they'll have uh, riot control gear, they'll have non-lethal weapons. But now you're trying to coordinate this across not just two to three threats. These threats now are multiplying on a daily basis. So I, I tell you right now, Charles, I don't envy a single person who has to provide security in Cleveland uh, this summer. Neither do I, Deirdre. Yeah, indeed. Morgan, I, I want to ask you, I mean, it, it's yeah. very early days, um, but this does concern the shooter in Dallas, and I just want to stress right. this is unconfirmed, but apparently on his Facebook page, he liked several militant and black separatist groups' pages. Uh, some of the quotes that he apparently liked, attack everything in blue except the mailman unless he's carrying more than mail. Also like the statement, we need recruiting everywhere. So if these links do in fact check out, which we don't know that they are, what does that mean for the safety and the security at the conventions? And then what does this mean to everyday citizens and those trying to protect us, the police? Well, look, it's a good source of intelligence at this point, who else he may be following or who he, who he may be inspired by. Deidre, you know, I talked about this after Paris, about some of the attackers mm -hmm. and, you know, the types of links and things like this. But I'll tell you what it poses a bigger problem. You were talking about it earlier with Charles. This now gets down to the point of what is Twitter, what is Facebook, what are all of these social media groups doing to prevent this type of exploitation, this type of violence, and this type of sharing of information. The minute you start encrypting information, you allow the coordination and the fact that you can post videos video of an attack, of a beheading, of a sniper incident, that's the thing that's going to encourage, and I tell you, Deirdre, that's what it is, it will encourage other people to get involved for that 15 seconds of fame, just like the guy who shot and killed the two reporters here in Virginia, not too far from me, and posted it on social media. This is now becoming a phenomenon that is going to be extremely difficult to stop. Yeah, and maybe these tech companies have to at least borrow a page from the media companies, right. or at least look to the FCC guidelines as a best practices. We know Zuckerberg has come out and said, look, we added staff to Facebook Live. We're, we're doing our best. But to your point, Morgan, I mean, there are numerous upsetting incidents that have been posted pretty much without warning. And look, there's a couple small things that they could do. I mean, there was a, an app called Yik Yak that was used for a lot of bullying and stuff. So schools started banning it on the property. They geofenced it. Facebook, Twitter, some of these other folks could geofence that entire downtown where the convention is being held and not allow any live video during the time that the RNC is going on. At least do something to prevent this from being broadcast and inciting other people to take action based on um, terrorist acts or criminal acts like it was in Dallas. Yeah, that would be yeah. a great idea. It would the be. Fencing. Yeah, what uh, a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of great ideas, and I got a feeling we'll be seeing drones, more robots, and absolutely and a whole lot of the other things. Because you can't even now assume that a peaceful protest will be peaceful. This one was wrapping up last night, and no one even thought maybe let's check the roofs or whatever. Morgan, thanks a lot, and uh, and thanks for keeping us safe. We appreciate it. You bet, Charles Deirdre. Thank you.